introduce myself for people I haven't spoken with in the past. Uh, my name is Taryn Kine, and I run Noify's uh, both customer support and advisor partnership teams. Um, what I'm going to be covering today is the process of job costing materials, and it, it seems pretty simple, but uh, you know, a lot of what we're going to be covering is, you know, partially uh, how it's going to be done in Noify, but also just uh, the general process flows that we go through when you're job costing materials for your construction project. Um, it can be a pretty detailed and complicated process uh, with a, a lot of different levels to it. And so what I'm going to do is kind of just uh, give you guys a quick run through of the different uh, levels of, uh, you know, budgeting and purchasing, paying all of your vendors and uh, just uh, first I'll kind of cover it on an outline level and just to give you uh, more info, I'll be diving into Noify to show you how to be managing your Noify accounts as well. Um, Basically, you know, the end goal is to be able to see this cost to date versus budget in the materials column on one of your projects in Noify, and that's what we're going to be uh, showing you after the uh, the slideshow part of this. Um, and actually, let me uh, before I'm going to kind of shift gears really quick and uh, give you my uh, quick spiel on our webinar. I always forget to kind of give this intro, but uh, for the sake of the format, you know, I told you we're going slideshow, then uh, a little bit more of a uh, in-app demo. Uh, but what I'm going to do is keep everyone on mute through the uh, actual process of this webinar. Uh, and then afterwards, you know, you can submit questions in the chat. Feel free to submit questions in the chat while I'm going through and I'll uh, touch base on those, you know, at the end of my portion of the presentation. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, we can also do some open Q&A. You can use the raise hand function. We'll take you off mute. We can chat a little bit and I'm happy to answer any questions. So. And we'll follow up with an open Q and A, and I'm recording all of this, so uh, afterwards, you know, we'll be putting it on YouTube so it can be viewed by anyone who couldn't make it here today. Uh, so a lot of what we like to talk about in Noify is different processes. You know, we talk about how the Noify job costing process is uh, budget, bid, track, and invoice. Uh, this isn't so different. Uh, only the material costing process that I'm going to be covering is budgeting, uh, ordering or purchasing the materials. Uh, receiving the bill, logging the bill in your system from the vendor, and then finally paying that bill. Uh, basically, you know, the process of budgeting can start by either just writing in a lump sum budget or estimated cost that, you know, you're expecting to spend on all of the materials. Uh, and, you know, it can be the lump sum, or you can break it down to an itemized list, which is always neat. Uh, plus, with our budgeting tools, the service templates, you can actually automate this process a little bit, and I'm going to be covering that a little bit as, while we go through. But once you have everything budgeted out, when you start tracking the actual versus this, uh, you know, budgeted cost that you laid out for materials, um, you're going to be actually ordering and purchasing the materials. You know, whether you're sending out a purchase order form or just going to the store and picking them up, that's going to be where we start seeing our cost to date increase versus what you had initially written in as the budget. Uh, but you know, in a lot of situations, especially in construction, you'll see that. You know, not everything is going to be purchased with cash or with a debit card or, uh, you know, swiping a credit card. A lot of times you're going to receive a bill later on from the vendor, especially if you're placing an order or if you're requesting a quote and you're hiding your prices. Uh, this is a big part of, you know, the job costing process and seeing that uh, accrued cost when the bill comes in against each of these purchase orders. Uh, and the last part of that, you know, once we have the bill in the system, we'll be actually paying the vendor and kind of how we keep a record of these different pieces of the process. And so you can use the one list of materials used in the way beginning to turn around later on and uh, actually uh, uh, use that same list of materials to place the order and to, uh, and to mark the items as received and use them all throughout this. And so sorry, someone had uh, used the video. I'm going to go ahead and stop that so it doesn't pop up. But um, So, just to start us off here, I'm going to talk about the budgeting side of this a little bit and kind of the differences between lump sum and itemized budgeting. In lump sum budgeting, as you can see with our top phase, this is actually two different, uh, two different states of a plan and track section in Noify where you can see the budgeting side where you're putting in your expected cost and you get to see your actual versus estimated at any point in Noify. Uh, and so the the lump sum budgeting is actually still very commonly used, where I just write in a materials budget where I'm saying, you know, for this phase of the job, I'm going to spend $2,000. I don't know what it's going to be on, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how many items do you need. Uh, 
or and someone has taken themselves off mute. Gonna go ahead and throw them back on mute. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it's really just saying, you know, I want to see how much I spend versus this two thousand dollars through the life of this job. Uh, the itemized budgeting is going to be, you know, it'll still have this total materials budget that you can track against. So you don't need to only order items out of the budget, but this is just going to give me a more detailed breakdown. You know, I have a list of materials. And so uh, in both of these, I still get an actual versus estimated. But in itemized, aside from just seeing my actual versus estimated cost, I'll actually see my actual versus estimated number of items ordered versus how many I had budgeted or, you know, number purchased versus budgeted. And I'm going to use the standard cost of these items that I'm generally paying to get this final materials budget so I can get a little bit more detail out of all of this at the end of the day. Uh, and I'll show you uh, when we go through purchasing how this is going to make the ordering process significantly easier. And that'll be a, a part of my uh, in-app demonstration. Um, after we have the budget, what we're going to get into next is purchasing. Now, this is where you're actually ordering the materials. Before you were just kind of prepping up, you know, as pre-project, once that job's live, I want to be able to actually acquire the materials so I can perform this work. So, you know, I have uh, a couple different types of purchases available. These are just uh, a lot of NOFI uh, references. Obviously, there's probably a bunch of different ways you can go about purchasing things. But in NOFI, we classify purchases as vendor will invoice which basically means I'm going to go ahead and buy the item. I'm going to receive a, you know, I'm going to send out an order or I'm going to go to a vendor and actually purchase something uh, at the store, but on a spending account. And at the end of the month or at the end of the period, they're going to send me a bill for this. Um, this is kind of the most commonly used one in NOFI. And I'm going to be showing you, uh, you know, how we're going to be reconciling our bills against these, uh, against these purchases. Um, but not everything is going to be billed later. You know, if I go to the store with company cash or, you know, a company debit card or I'm writing them a check, then this purchase is actually, you know, going to be closed out as soon as I buy the item because uh, the cash is changing hands right there. That's going to be my actual cost. Um, you know, we don't bother with the purchase order form or anything. You know, it's going to be pushed right to QuickBooks because that's an expense as soon as I order this item or as soon as I purchase this item. It's a similar situation with credit cards, but obviously if you buy something with a credit card, you will receive a bill later. It just won't be from the vendor, it's gonna be from the credit card company. Uh, and so we have ways you can manage this as well by syncing up with the credit card feed in your QuickBooks account. Uh, this way, you know, we'll use QuickBooks' uh, match function to send over a transaction that's gonna look at the banking feed and it's gonna say, well, we noticed that this purchase that we grabbed from Notify is worth the same amount uh, and it was purchased on the same day with the same credit card, is this the same transaction? And that way you can reconcile your banking feed and which uh, of these credit card purchases uh, is okay. Uh, two styles that I won't cover too much here are reimbursements, which is just uh, for any of your employees or any uh, people in the field that are gonna be submitting you know, a request for payment because uh, they uh, purchased something with their own cash. Uh, that way, you know, we can set it up where we'll automatically create a bill using that employee as the vendor so you can pay them and we'll be able to track the process of that as well. And we can also manage what we call, you know, flexible or open POs, which is really how we manage our subcontracts. Basically, we don't log these costs into the project until you've received the bill. So it's a little bit different in that, you know, we like to see the committed costs when you are uh, placing the order or or actually buying the materials in a vendor will invoice situation. Um, whereas, you know, in flexible or uh, open fields, we'll wait till you receive the, uh, till you actually log the bill in the system. Uh, and one thing I always like to bring up with purchases, because this is something that we're asked about a lot. Uh, whenever you're logging a purchase, what you're going to be uploading is a receipt. So, you know, this isn't going to be a situation where uh, you have the bill yet, but the document that would go along uh, with this, aside from the purchase order, I just showed a NOFI example here uh, on the right, but this is going to be when you are putting the receipt into the system. Uh, this is something that would be done on our mobile app as well. I can touch on uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, but the last thing uh, that's going to happen in this purchasing process, if you're using the vendor will invoice, is the billing side of things. You know, when the vendor actually sends you the bill and they say, okay, here's everything you've purchased, now you need to pay us this much. Uh, you know, obviously they'll have payment terms and all that. And so you're accruing the cost as soon as the bill is received. Um, this will close out any of the purchases that are being that have been uh, completely uh, billed at this point in time. 
Uh, and then the last point, uh, of, uh, the last part of this transaction will be logging the actual payment against the bill, you know, actually writing the check and paying your vendor for what they're requesting, you know, from everything you've purchased. Um, just a couple of side things that I'm also going to be covering here are things like partial billing. You know, you may not be billed for an entire purchase all at once, uh, or you can have group billing where, you know, that's a little bit more of what I was referring to earlier, where they may send you one bill for several purchases. Uh, and then another level of this, since there is both the bill and the payment, uh, there may be partial payments. So, you know, you can still manage, you know, I may have been billed for a full $500, but I want to, you know, make note that I've only paid 250 at this point. We'll pay the outstanding 250 later on. Um, and so that's just an overview of everything I'm going to cover. Now I'm going to jump into my Noify account and show you a little bit more about how this is all going to be managed. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a new job really quick. Call it webinar project. And I'm going to use my professional style of job costing. Uh, for those of you who are, aren't very familiar with Noify, this basically means that we're going to be tracking against the budget uh, instead of just, you know, logging all of our purchases. Uh, you can still uh, use Simple or Advanced to track purchases, but you'll lose that first piece of the job, the really powerful budgeting uh, portion of this. Site address isn't very uh, relevant here, but I'll go ahead and just plug something in. So, First, I'll cover the lump sum uh, budgeting, which can be as simple as this. You know, first we have to do site prep and demolition. And I'll probably spend $1,500 on materials. Uh, I'll show you how we can track our actual cost versus this 1500 But you can actually go through processes really quickly and get in budgets by just writing in numbers like that. Uh, a lot of contractors are so familiar with their business that they really like to just plug these numbers in. Uh, it's not always the best method of getting the budget into the system, but if you want to put something together really quickly and you don't have that much detail or you don't uh, you know, want to put in nearly as much detail, this is always an option that we offer. Um, now what we can also do is put something in where I'll say, like, we need to do framing and my materials budget is going to consist of this list of materials. That's what this add materials button is going to do here. So what I could do is actually reference my catalog, which is your products and services list from uh, QuickBooks, where I can actually come in here and say, like, I'm going to need lumber. Uh, I'm going to need, you know, some plywood. It looks like I don't have plywood in my database here. Uh, that's actually fine. That's part of our process. We like you to have the option to be able to write in an item that isn't going to permanently be in your uh, products and services catalog. So I could say, you know, plywood, 100 sheets for $6, and still part of my budget without me having to add this into QuickBooks. Maybe if you keep a simple uh, catalog of uh, products in QuickBooks, this might be a little bit uh, better of a solution for you in some situations. Um, and so this way I can kind of just plug in everything one item at a time, you know, nails, one box of nails, uh, you know, I'm ordering uh, 25 boxes at $10 each. And so, You'll notice that the materials budget is still uh, totaling up a, you know, materials budget at the phase level rather than just at the item level. So this way, when I'm tracking my material cost, I may end up needing to buy other things that aren't included here. Uh, but I can always see my total uh, actual cost versus my budgeted cost uh, for my materials. So that's an important point to note. Uh, for what it's worth, just to show you guys a couple of neat Noify tricks to automate this process, because writing in everything one item at a time isn't always uh, the easiest or the most fun. We do always have the option to use service templates, where I could say drywall hanging, uh, you know, uh, it's a thousand linear feet. And we can automate a material budget that way, just so we don't have to write everything out. Uh, or we can actually use a uh, spreadsheet. And this is actually really handy for any of your clients who uh, may be using uh, takeoff software where they get their list of materials before while they're budgeting the process from another software. As long as that software can export into a sheet that says, here's the list of items, quantity you'll need, and how much we expect to spend, you can just copy those three columns and paste them in here. And it'll automatically add that to your materials budget for this phase of the job. So it's just a nice way to speed up the process a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and save my project here. Uh, you'll see it's not, you know, uh, terribly 
labor heavy project or I guess I threw in ten thousand dollars but uh, I'm just gonna build a quick proposal none of this is really relevant to the budgeting process so I just uh, go very simple with this 50% markup make active this is actually a nice little demonstration on how fast we can get proposals in the system in NoFi but now that this uh, project is active my plan and track section is going to show me my cost to date field versus my budget but i won't just see it at the total overall materials level it's going to be broken down to each phase of the job and each phase is going to have its own internal materials budget now we can start logging material costs by clicking this order materials button now this although it says order materials doesn't need to be a situation where you're actually ordering the materials you're really just logging a purchase so if I click order materials, you'll see it pulls me into purchases. The difference between coming into purchases the way that I did here, rather than uh, coming in through clicking the purchases button, is simply that it just automatically fills in the job here for me. I always had the option to say purchases, add new purchase, select job, uh, 819, and it pulls up this webinar project for me. But basically, what we did here is say, I need to add some material cost to site prep, order materials, and it's gonna ask for the vendor. And the vendor database, of course, is gonna sync with QuickBooks in both directions. So we always have that in, uh, you know, in both NoFi and QuickBooks. And I can just start writing in different items that I've used here. You know, I, I purchased some paint. Oh, this is called painting. I'm gonna go with actually paint, five gallon bucket. And I'll say, you know, we paid $15 per gallon of paint and we bought, you know, uh, 10 buckets. And that's just my way of logging a purchase into the system manually. For what it's worth, this is another thing that you can actually copy in from a spreadsheet. So if you are going to be placing an order and you have that takeoff software, but you just put a lump sum budget into the system, this is a way to get more detail in when you're purchasing. And then it's going to ask me for the payment method down here. And this is going to be really where we start delineating between the different uh, styles of syncing with QuickBooks in NoFi. So when I say vendor will invoice, it's not actually going to push anything to QuickBooks. It's going to wait for us to log a bill. And that's what we're going to send to your QuickBooks account. And this is just going to say, uh, say as an outstanding bill in both NoFi and QuickBooks. So that way I can actually see, you know, how much I owe my vendors. Uh, I could see, you know, both in NoFi and QuickBooks if, it's, if the bills have been paid yet. And it can always be paid, you know, in either software, record, I should say, as paid in either software. And then it's going to ask for supporting documents. Since this is at the purchase level, uh, what I'm logging here would be a receipt that I got from the vendor. So like, let's say I have an open spending account with Home Depot. They're still going to give me a receipt, even though they're going to be billing me later, just so I have a record of what I purchased. And this is where you would upload that so we can keep it on our servers for you. I can go ahead and submit this. And now that's going to be part of the cost of my job. And I'm going to be able to log a bill against that. For what it's worth, if I was going to send it out to the vendor, I could uh, place the order uh, by clicking here. But I'm going to cover that more in just a second. That's how we would in input a purchase if we didn't have the budgeted itemized list in my system. But now I'm going to cover this other phase. We're actually budgeted by writing in a list of different materials that I know that I'm going to need to order. Now when I click order materials, it pulls up a screen and says, well, which of these materials do you need to order? So that way I can click the items from the list, say start PO process, and it not only pulls me into purchases and chooses the right phase of the job, but it fills out the list for me too. It also lets me adjust quantities. You know, a lot of times people will over budget the quantity just so that way they can, uh, you know, they have a little bit of wiggle room in case anything is broken on site or anything along those lines. So I'm going to order slightly less lumber than I expected. I'll say, you know, I'm ordering these things from ABC Supply. If you don't choose a payment method, we default to vendor will invoice. When I submit this, it's going to generate my purchase order form for me, but it's also going to generate an open PO which I can reconcile the bill against later. So this is just how we'll generate the form. And then you can email it to the vendor here. For what it's worth, if you're actually gonna be getting a quote from the vendor, if you uncheck include prices and update the preview, you'll see that now the PO is just a list of materials and quantities. 
So basically you're just saying, let me know how much it's gonna cost. And I can even include additional info that says like, please give best quote for shipping by, you know, September 1st. I would be able to send this out and it would keep a copy of, uh, it would send a copy of this to me as well. But now this open purchase is in my system, you see under manage active purchases, and we let you use that same list of materials that we set up in the budget that we then logged as part of our purchase to again mark the items as they're received at the job site. If not all of them are received, we'll highlight the clipboard so you know there's still some outstanding items. But if everything's received, we'll close it out. Now, this is gonna be part of the cost of the job. So if I open up this project, I can see the material cost has increased. It's showing me the paint cost, it's showing me the lumber and the plywood costs. But at this point, we haven't actually received the bill from the vendor yet. So what I can do is open up this purchase. For what it's worth, if I only get a bill for one purchase, I can actually shortcut in by saying, create bill for PO. What I can also do is come to my bills module and say, I need to add a new bill into my system. And this is where we would let you upload this. So especially, you know, obviously you can scan items in, but nowadays so many vendors will just email a PDF file. So this is where you can upload it and keep it on file with Noify. And you can see it uh, on the bill and you can just ch uh, check in at any point in time. Uh, let me confirm that this is the correct amount. Now, I had uh, brought up partial versus, uh, you know, group billing and uh, billing by PO. That's what the difference between processing by vendor name and processing by PO does here. If I receive one bill for several purchases, it could be best to just write in the name of the vendor and know if I was going to show me everything that's outstanding amongst any purchases. So like right now, this is just for 190 because it's the only purchase I have open with ABC Supply. But if I add another purchase really quick, I'm going to see that I can actually log one bill against several of these. So it's going to be job costed accordingly. You know, it's for 819. Let's call it for the drywall work. And so now, even though those purchases are separate uh, entities in Noify, I could say ABC Supply, and it's going to say, well, here's everything that's outstanding. I could say, well, they just sent me a bill for the lumber for this something and a bucket. So that's gonna be the total amount that we log as part of the bill. For what it's worth, we can fill in the rest of the info to push it over to QuickBooks, like my payment terms, due date, all that, invoice number. And when I submit this, it's gonna send it to the QuickBooks account and we'll sync up the payments in both directions. So now we've seen a couple different layers of this. You know, we put in the list of items so we could, play, uh, so we could budget the uh, cost of the job. Then we ordered the materials so we could track the, uh, the purchased items uh, as part of the committed cost of the job. And now we just log the uh, bill against those purchases. Uh, it looks like both of them are still open because there's outstanding items. So if I come in here, I can see 191 and 190 are still open. But if I log a bill against the last item on 190, and I could do that by saying process by PO, they send me a bill for 190 and it'll automatically just pull in the outstanding items on this purchase. Aside from sending the bill to QuickBooks, it'll actually close out that purchase. So now it goes right from 190 to 189, and I can actually view that by coming into my history, and I'll see the different outstanding uh, purchases that way instead. Um, and so we closed out the purchase, we opened up our bills, and I can actually log the final part of this, which would be the payment against the bills, by clicking this checkbox, this is how I would do to notify. It's not going to actually pay any uh, any of the vendors. It's just a way for me to record the payment by saying, you know, record payment. Uh, you know, we're going to pay with a QuickBooks check, or I can uh, write in a memo or anything along those lines. That'll carry over to QuickBooks and close out there. Um, it looks like I had an error with this one, but the other option. Hey, let's actually go ahead and troubleshoot really quick. Ah, I closed out this purchase. Well, anyway, uh, the other option would be that I could open up my QuickBooks account and record the payment. A lot of the benefit of that being that you could log one payment or against multiple bills in QuickBooks. That's something that's actually not available in Noify. 
But then when you sync up with Novi, it'll close out all of these bills here as well, just so you can uh, uh, manage a little bit more of group entry and group payments. Uh, also, if you record a partial payment, let's say I paid Amazon uh, only $100 of this $200 bill, that'll still stick with QuickBooks as well, and we'll keep it on file so we know that this is still outstanding in the amount of $100. So that's just kind of how we manage everything from you know budgeting, then uh, to purchasing, to logging the bills, to recording the payment on the bills. And you can see that at any point in time, I can come into this project and see that the material cost of the job is updating in real time versus this information. Uh, one thing I didn't cover that's actually another important point is that if you're sending out a purchase uh, and the vendor is going to send you their quote, uh, best chances are, you know, what you wrote in as your estimated cost to track the temporary, you know, committed cost of the job might not be, you know, perfectly uh, in line with what they're going to end up billing you. So if I log a bill against this purchase, and this is just how our little shortcut's going to work here, it just goes to add a new bill and uh, process by PO number. What I write in here is going to be the final build price from the vendor. So I thought it was going to be $4.99 per brush. It actually ended up being $5.64. That means that if I open up this project plan, that's the amount that we're going to attach to the cost of the job. So if I come in and see how much did I spend on brushes, it's going to show $5.64, and that's the actual cost, or I guess accrued cost, because I haven't paid this yet. But that's just my way of getting a little bit more information out. Uh, on how, I've been, how I'm doing in real time on my material cost. Um, the last thing I'm going to cover, uh, and this wasn't even in my outline, but I just wanted to bring it up because it's another part of job costing that uh, you know always should be managed, is job costing inventory. Even though the purchasing process doesn't need to be related directly to a job, and you can always create a purchase order not against the job notify if you simply like our purchasing and billing system, if you use items on a project, you actually still want to be able to track that uh, cost to the job. I can do that by coming into this phase and saying, instead of order materials, allocate from inventory. So I can come in here and say, you know, we used lumber and we used some drywall. I had to use uh, 100 studs of lumber and 80 sheets of drywall. And that's going to add part of the material cost of this phase of the job and the total cost of the job, even though I didn't log any purchases or anything like that. And so I have this updating, you know, in real time as I add the items. And that's actually available on our smartphone app now, where you can just get be a technician on the site and say, I used uh, 80 sheets of drywall. And it'll update the job cost for you. And this is a nice way to add something as part of the job cost that, you know, you don't have to sync with QuickBooks. So, for, so it's handy for things like historical cost um, or anything that you know you've already purchased and logged the bill uh, in QuickBooks, so you don't need to push anything additional. This is just a way to make a manual adjustment to the cost of the job. Uh, for what it's worth, if you ever need to remove any of these, they're still managed in purchases, even though it's not a purchase. I would just go into history, or I could click where it said via catalog here, and we can remove them. But that's the basics of how we'll go through any kind of job costing uh, for materials in our system. Um, that's just about everything that I wanted to cover with my webinar today. Uh, let's see if we got anything in the chat. Uh, nothing yet. Feel free to submit something uh, if you have any questions. Um, you can raise hand if you'd like me to take you off mute so you can ask uh, you know, over the audio. Um, again, I did record this demo, uh, and I will be posting it on uh, our YouTube channel as well as uh, in our Facebook group. If you guys aren't in the Facebook group, I uh, highly recommend you join. Uh, it's a great way to uh, just learn a little bit more about uh, Noify as well as, uh, you know, be able to talk amongst your peers and different uh, members of the Construction Company Advisors Network about uh, questions you have about Noify, about clients who are in, in construction. Um, so uh, I just got a question, do you offer a certification program for accountants? Um, we absolutely do. Uh, I know a lot of people who are in CCAN actually, um, I know that uh, a lot of people who are in CCAN aren't necessarily part of our NOFI advisor program. Um, what we're working on with CCAN is certifying just general construction accounting. That's what this webinar uh, is all about. 
is just covering you know how uh, different parts of uh, construction costing and consulting and advising works. Uh, we also have a referral program if you're interested in uh, wholesale billing or uh, getting you know uh, free access to clients' accounts. And it's more of a partnership program that you know involves a, a little bit uh, of a team effort between you know Noify and you guys supporting your clients. Um, we have a question uh, about, uh, and actually just real quick, you know, I, I'll be sending out a follow-up email to everyone in the network and anyone who's on this webinar. So that'll be a great way to join both programs and feel free to reach out to me if you have more questions. I do run our advisor program. Um, Rick asked about, you know, materials in QuickBooks inventory used in a project. When you add an inventory item in QuickBooks, it automatically sets up as a product, which will pull it into Notify as a catalog item. We don't make adjustments to your QuickBooks catalog uh, uh, quantity on hand, but when I did this allocate from inventory, it started using our uh, catalog to search. So when I said lumber, that very easily could have been a item from my QuickBooks library. Uh, and so that's just a way to have you know the cost in Noify. You will need to make the manual adjustment in QuickBooks as far as the quantity on hand goes. But what we run is this purchase report where I can say, you know, show me all of my purchases and catalog uh, allocations from the 1st to the 28th. And it'll give me the numbers. So if I want to make the adjustments to my quantity on hand in QuickBooks, you know, once a month, once a week, we can give you a quantity used just so you have that information still. It'll show me everything that I've logged as a purchase and then everything that was allocated from my catalog. Um, all right, I think that's the last of our questions. Uh, thanks everyone for joining me. Uh, I will be posting this on YouTube as soon as it is done uh, loading up onto my computer. Uh, again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, but thanks again and everyone have a nice rest of your week.